Hello, my name is Jenny. I'm an artist and illustrator, and I'm also the founder of Wildlife Drawing. I'm absolutely thrilled to be hosting a drawing class on behalf of Fontenham and Mason to celebrate their exclusive London honey range sourced from beehives on the rooftops of six very, very fancy London locations. I'm going to be teaching you how to draw one of their famous Buckfest honeybees. We're also going to be learning all about honeybees, how amazing they are and how vital they are for a healthy ecosystem. The materials you're going to need today are some paper, some pencils, I use a 2B and a 4B, a pencil sharpener, an eraser, and a little bit of enthusiasm and self-confidence. So this drawing tutorial is step-by-step step and it's for absolutely everybody, regardless of your ability levels. Even for those who claim they can only draw stick men. We'll be working today from this beautiful reference image of a honeybee busy gathering nectar from one of the rooftops and it's available to download from the Fortnum's website. Just before we get started, I'd like to mention the Fortnum & Mason Honey Raffle. This year, they're raising money for a wonderful charity called Bees for Development. And by making a donation, however big or small, you could be in with the chance of winning a fabulous Fortnum & Mason hamper, plus five jars of this prized honey to give away to your friends and family. Or maybe you want to keep it for yourself. To find out more, search Honey Raffle on the Fortnum's website. But do be quick, because it closes on Friday. Right then, let's begin. So before I draw any animal, I often find it's really, really helpful for me to uh, understand its anatomical structure. And I think especially considering the reference image we're working from, um, we need to have a bit of an understanding of, of where all the parts are on the bee, on our honey bee. And so um, bees are actually made up from three main sections. So we've got the head here, obviously, with the two big eyes. We've got the thorax, which is the, the furry bit in the middle here. And then we've got the abdomen. And so when you're um, creating your, your drawing, it's a really good idea to just think about simple shapes. And so these three shapes will really help us put together the structure of everything. Um, it's also good to note that uh, honeybees have two wings on either side. Um, we may not be able to see them exactly in our reference image, but we know that they're there. And then also something to have a look at uh, are the legs. So the first set here are attached to the sort of top of the, the thorax here. And then um, the second and third set are much further down. But we also have to note the difference in um, sort of shape of the, the different leg parts because they have different jobs, you see. Um, so with that all in mind, uh, think about simple shapes. We're going to move on to having a look at our reference image. So you'll want to either print out your reference image, or if you prefer, you can have it on a separate screen. Um, ideally, it would be a device that you are um, not watching the drawing tutorial on. We've got our paper here. And then this one here is a sort of one I made earlier. So we're going to be working just in pencil, but I'm going to be showing you how to create the form and the proportion of the honeybee. Also a little bit about tone, texture and how to get a nice three dimensional look. Wonderful. All ready to go. So we're going to begin with a, a simple circle to show this thorax section here. And that circle will denote the size of the rest of the drawing. Um, so it's a good idea to make sure you understand you've got enough paper and you've got enough space for the composition. And you want to start this circle, but keep your lines nice and faint. I'll press on a tiny bit harder so you can see it. Um, we want to create just a nice circle, just a very, very quick and sketchy, just to show that shape there and how uh, big the rest of the B is going to be. And then again, next time we want to um, add an oval for the head. And what we're doing here is just simplifying this bee down into really simple shapes and lines. And just looking at how those shapes sort of cross and, and relate to each other. So our, our oval is probably going to be about half the width of this thorax here. And a little bit further up and a little bit more overly like that. Wonderful. Then the next thing, next shape we'd like to put in is the abdomen here. And granted, we can't see all of it because it's hidden by flowers and by some of the legs, but we can understand what shape it is because we've had a look at that diagram. So we can understand that it's, it's coming, it's sort of fixing to the, um, the thorax here and coming down in a sort of um, shapely line. And so, 
There we go, something a little bit like that. So don't worry too much about any detail or texture or anything like that. All we're doing now is we're creating a plan of our bee and that will be um, what the basis that we can, we can build upon all of those, that texture and that tone. And our next shape we want to put in is um, we want to just mark out where our wings are here. And sometimes the way I do that, whenever I'm, I'm trying to draw an angle that's coming out from somewhere, I generally turn um, the, the base of the line or where it begins into a clock face. And I can understand what time these angles are shooting out from, which just means your angles are much, much more um, precise. And so we want to look at where this um, this wing begins here and so I'm thinking if we turn again thinking of this as a circle it's a little bit further up and a bit further to the left so a little bit up further to the left and so here's the sort of basis of our wing and then we're understanding that it's sort of 12, 3, 6, 9, it's about 9 o'clock so we want to just draw a nice line coming back out and that's going to be the line for our wing. The next thing we want to do is just maybe add in a little bit more of the detail around the head here. So we've got this gigantic eye, which we might want to put in here. And then we can see here that um, actually this is the, the bee's tongue and that's coming into the, the flower to get the nectar there. So we know that this sort of extends down a little bit further. So you want to add just a, a little bit of a, a line just to show where that is. Our next step is to um, follow the joints of the legs and making, make sure that they all look uh, like they're gripping onto the flower. And so the way that I would do that, in the same way as um, I studied the, the joint structure of the legs in the diagram, I want to just understand where the joints are and where they bend. And again, I can do that, uh, so I can start with this leg here, which I know um, has part of it behind, so it will be bent. Um, and so really we can only see the sort of the front section of the leg here. But again, we're looking at that circle, figuring out where... Uh, the base of the line is and then what I want you to do is sort of just add a few lines just to show there's the joint one sort of to the edge of the circle there and then joint two which is attached to the flower and then you know you can't see a lot of the foot but you know it will um, it will definitely be there just there so that's this line and this line and then once you've got your lines and you know that they are in the right place, um, you can put them into a little bit more like a sausage shape and understand how those legs curve a little bit. So our elbow, this will be poking out towards us. And again, we can do the same with this back leg, but really make sure that you get that lovely sort of wide area of those back legs. And so we'll do the same again. We can understand that the leg attaches to the bee's body here. And then it comes back almost to the edge of the of the back of the abdomen here. And then we want to another joint about here and then all the way down to where it meets the flower. So again, we can use our sausages to uh, widen them out a little bit, but pretty funny shaped sausages here. So we're going to just pay attention to how those um, legs widen and the different shapes that they create. Something a bit like that. And then for our, our top leg, our um, the one that's closest to, to the head, we can actually not see all of it. So, and actually, if you can manage to zoom in or have a really good look on your reference image, the foot of the bee is actually here. So really, we can only see the last two sections of it because um, it's raised up. And so we want to do again, look at where the basis of that line is. And it kind of comes across the head here. So we just want to make sure we get that line right. It's about here. And then that's number one. And then the joint's about here. And that's number two, about there. So you should be getting something that looks a little bit like a very, very simple B at the moment. Next thing we're going to do is put our antennae in and you can understand that they meet the head just above um, where the, the, 
the mouth and the tongue area are. So you want to add those in there. Just two lines coming down, one next to the other. So they almost look like they're, they're one line, but they're not because we know the diagram. We know that they have two antennae. And then the last sort of plan thing you need to do is, is just add a little bit of context for your bee so it's not sort of floating in midair. And our uh, flowers are a little bit complex here, but what we can do is just sort of understand that this whole section is sort of a circle with a little bit of frilly, a few frilly edges for our petals. And we'll, we'll work into this later, but we just want to make sure we know where everything is and give that bee a little bit of something to, um, to sit on. And then the last thing we can do is just understand that we can see a slight bit of the leg on the opposite side there. So we want to show again where that is. And you see the joint just underneath here, just underneath where that, um, where the, the bees kind of little tongue is. And so again, our sausages, figuring out where that is. And here at this point, we can bend our wing back round. Something like this. And just show that there's another one under there as well. Fantastic. Before we go in again for our texture and our tone, what I'm going to ask you to do now is just to really figure out that you've got everything right. And the way that I do that is to do something called the line method. So what I want to do is draw imaginary lines on the, uh, on the reference image so I can really understand where everything is. And so I can understand that this sort of knee joint here of the B, if I, if I take that as my starting point and I come straight down, I can see that it meets almost the ankle of the, sec of the, le the last leg. So I'm thinking, is this about here? And then bringing it down and actually it's just slightly out. So I think that this leg needs to come forward a little bit here. And so it's a, see what I mean? It's a really, really good way of just figuring out that where you've got, um, making sure you've got all of your um, lines in the right place. And that's where the rubber comes in. The rubber is your friend. It is, it will help you out in many a sticky situation. Okay, then we can do that again as well. So we can understand that the, um, the, the joint here of this, uh, of this leg. So coming up up here a little bit actually um, if you run that line across it's almost touching the tip of the the tongue of the bee there so if we bring that down and then here it shows me that I need to bring the sort of the mandible I think it's called and the tongue of that bee down so that meets up nicely so here I am just cross-checking all of my all of my lines, all of my proportions. And I'm doing this just so I don't get further down the line and I'm disappointed that something is not matching up right or it's not, it's not, it's not perfect. This is your sort of safety net. And once you're happy with all of your lines and your proportions and everything, um, what we can now go for is um, a little bit of tone, a little bit of texture. So I'm still working with my 2B here. And I think the first thing to do, because what we're aiming for um, when you're working into a pencil drawing is actually to use all the tones that the pencil is capable of. So what I've done is worked into this image for, for quite a, a while. And what I've been doing is building up um, all of the areas of tone. So where the light's not hitting it. So things like underneath here, where the, um, the abdomen of the bee is facing the flower, and here kind of where you can see those areas of, of light and dark, you want to just have a think about where they are on the image and then pick them out. And so you'll want to concentrate your marks where those uh, areas are the darkest. And then, but don't be afraid of leaving the, the highlight of the paper to show through, especially here when you've got the lovely shiny bits on the leg and here where the, the sort of fluff is catching the light. And so the way that I always make sure that I'm doing that correctly is to do a little tonal scale. So I almost draw a little line, a little sort of section of uh, boxes. So here I am, 
going as dark as the pencil is able to go. And then what I'll do is just slightly lighter. So I'm just manipulating how hard I'm pressing onto the paper with. And then we'll go lighter again. So that's um, sort of your mid-tones now. And a little lighter still, and then barely there. And then here we go using the paper, the whiteness of the paper to show through. And I think when drawings use all of these tones, that's when they become dramatic and exciting and we want to look at them. So the next thing we want to do is to break up our outlines, make sure they reflect the sort of furriness of this bee. And so what you might want to do then is just take out the, the initial circle that you, um, that you put in for the, for the thorax. And what I always do when I want to show texture is to make sure my pencil is always going in the same direction as the fur or the hair or the feathers. And so our, our bee here, it's the hairs are sort of sticking out at all different, all different directions. And so we want to do the same, exactly the same with our pencil and just showing not just the texture, but the shape of the bee as well. And then here underneath the wing. Perfect. And I'm going to take this line out as well. And so we want to reflect all of that furriness on the head again with all of our our repetitive lines thank you brilliant oops great stuff so yeah i'm just doing lots and lots of repetitive lines just building up that texture and then what we might want to do next is add in our fantastic big eye here um and so when you're drawing any kind of eye, it's a really good idea to understand not just what the eye looks like itself, so it's this sort of oval shape here, but you also usually will find a reflection in it. So here we go there, that's um, the light reflecting off the eye. And so it's really good to put that in as well because that shows, it just makes your animal look so much more alive just want to colour all around that, make sure we've got that reflection in perfect. And then if you can see here, we've got a little bit of a, a sort of border, if you like, all around. And, and sometimes I find it really, really useful to keep my pencil nice and sharp at this point. And so I always make use of my pencil sharpener. And so we want to make sure that we leave that border around the eye, just showing that the eye belongs to the face there. Amazing. Okay then, now we're gonna have a little look at the abdomen. And here I can see a little bit of fur here, but the, the actual abdomen itself is not as furry. And it's a little bit more kind of like a hard shell and is quite shiny. So we're gonna finish our hairiness about here and then we just want to maybe again you can take out any of your sketch lines um, if they're getting in the way and you might want to just add a little bit of um, a little bit of shape here because generally with the um, abdomen they're all the uh, those little separate sections and when they overlay each other that's what creates that lovely black and yellow um, the classic stripes that we all know and we can understand that these sections come around here. So these are our sort of stripes here. And so the next thing we might want to do is start to have a little look at the legs. And so these legs, um, again, we've, we've marked out where they are, but we also, they're a lot darker than the rest of the body. But do, do be mindful as you are starting to um, colour them in, you still want to leave that little section here or um, wherever on the leg that's looking nice and bright and shiny and reflecting the light because that will show that the legs are a slightly different texture and 
again make your bee look a lot more alive. Okay, we can start to just be a little bit more forceful with our lines now. We want to show the rounded shape of these. Okay, the rounded shape of these um, leg sections as well. So you can use your pencil shading to do that. And the last one here. Just paying careful attention as to how these leg sections fit together. Amazing, so it's starting to all look pretty good here now. And what we're going to try and do now is work a little bit more into the body. So we're working to try and get that those amazing sense of the different tones um, and the light and the dark. So I'm going to switch to my 4B pencil now and I'm going to start really just working into those areas that aren't getting much light. So here underneath the bee's um, sort of chin here. I don't know if bees have chins. <laughs> And here, all over the face, you can work that in. And add a little bit for the antenna. Just making sure they don't look like straight lines because they are made up of lots of uh, little sections. And yeah, so we're just looking at the areas of light and dark and again, working with short kind of repetitive lines just to emulate the texture of that bee. And we want to understand whether, whether um, shapes fit together, there will be more shading too. Um, but slightly less shading where there is light hitting the bee or there is um, a lighter area, so say the more yellowy areas. And whilst I do that, I'm just going to tell you a few of my, my favourite facts about honeybees. Well, so the first thing I, I'm sure you'll be interested to hear about is how honeybees actually make the honey. They do it by collecting the nectar, which is what our honeybee is doing here. And what they do is they, they use their long tongue and they, they sup up the nectar from the, the blossoms of the flowers and they store it in their honey stomach which is different to the stomach where, they, uh, where their food goes. And then they fly back to the hive where there's lots of other honeybees and work, worker bees. And then the nectar is actually passed by mouth to the worker bees, which then chomp down on this honey, on this nectar, sorry, um, for a really long time. It's sort of, yeah, about half an hour or so. And then, the, that means that the, the um, nectar is worked into honey at that point. And then once the, the honey has been made, uh, the bees store it uh, in their little wax hexagonal compartments, which we know as honeycomb. Absolutely fascinating. And the bees always make more honey than they actually need. So that means that we're allowed to have some as well. Okay then. Now I've spent a little bit of time working into my bee, really building up the texture and the tone and these lines. Um, we can come on to a few more of the finer details. And so the next thing we want to do is um, add a little bit more structure to our wing. And so if you look very carefully, you can see just how that wing uh, attaches to the thorax here. You've got sort of a, a sort of circle area here and then just a little bit of something extra and then that's sort of coming out to the the actual wings there and you can see that it's the top line here that that's the one that is the darkest so you can follow that out with your steady hand whoops something like this and then it might be that your wings need to be just a slightly bit bit on the longer side something like that and then again we know we don't have can't exactly see it because the image fades out a little bit but we will have a second wing 
just underneath there. So the artistic license <laughs> is all yours with these kind of images. <laughs> the main thing is you're enjoying doing it, so don't worry. Um, and then what we want to do is break down the, the structure of the, um, the wing uh, into the, the sort of veiny section. So you can see here um, that there are little uh, veins within this, within that wing. And so we want to just, again, keeping your line sort of a little bit firm, but not too dark. And you want to just sort of separate out the areas of the wing into sort of little sections so you can be a little bit uh, creative as to how you fit them together. There's no rhyme or reason to it necessarily. And the same for the bottom here. Something a little bit like that and just make sure we can see the difference between them. So now I'm moving back onto my 2B pencil. And that's because we're going to add a little bit of the flower that our bee is, uh, is sitting on here. And it depends on how much or how little of the flower that you would like to draw. Obviously, we, you can, you're very welcome to just add a hint of a few sort of petals here and there, a few of the, the sort of little buds here, just to show that your bee is not sort of floating in midair. Um, or you can choose to draw a little bit more of the flower. It's completely up to you. And actually, if you decide not to, and you just add a few sort of petals here and there, sometimes I actually find that's, um, in a way, a little bit more interesting visually than it is um, when you're uh, adding every single little detail, because actually, um, I like quite like unfinished drawings. And I find that they sort of, really show the sort of human, um, yeah, the human touch. So you can add as much or as little as you like. Get some of the buds that are coming out. Here you can use your marks quite sort of gesturally. Again, making sure your, um, your lines are always going in the sort of structural shape of the flower. And again, you've got the artistic license here, so you can basically do exactly whatever you like. And then what we want to do is just make sure that our bee looks like it is definitely behind the flower. So you want to just join up the areas where you, your flower is meeting the bee, maybe give them a little bit extra in terms of shadow, that section there. And at this point, I'm going to just start to put the finishing touches on. So what I'm gonna be doing is working in again with my 2B pencil. I'm gonna be just tightening up the edges of my drawing, making sure all of those textures and the areas of dark are just, just the right amount, working into any areas that I see maybe needs a little bit extra, can work on the flowers a little bit here. So the process of bees visiting flowers to get their nectar is also incredibly useful for the plants as they rely on the bees for pollination. Some plants have even evolved to have extra colorful or sweet smelling flowers to attract the bees. So many, many of the fruits and vegetables that we eat rely on insect pollination to grow. So we're really in big trouble if we don't work hard to save our bees. Another thing that we can do to help our bees uh, as to have make sure that we have lots of bee friendly uh, flowers and plants in our gardens or balconies or window boxes. There's lots of information online about planting wild flowers and, and bee friendly flowers, which will really help them along. So I think I'm going to leave it there actually. I think it's always really important not to overwork your drawings. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this bee. Um, I think it looks pretty much like the reference image. And it's nice to have uh, really understood its anatomical features at the same time. Well, that's it from me. 
Thank you so much for joining and I really hope you enjoyed learning how to draw the honeybee with me. If you're going to pop your images online, please do tag us with the hashtags. We'd absolutely love to see your interpretation of the Fortnum's honeybees.